Have you ever wondered where Cyrano de Bergerac came from? Well, he obviously came from Bergerac, and this is where I am now. It's mainly thanks to the playwright Edmund Rostand and his 1897 play Cyrano de Bergerac that we have the story of a man with a bulbous nose who woos the beautiful Roxanne by using his more handsome but dimmer friend Christiane de Neuviette. The story was an instant hit, inviting audiences to root for the talented, larger-than-life hero thwarted by his gigantic proboscis. And of course, Hollywood got in on the act early, depicting Serrano with his honking great nose, skilled swordsmanship and ability to fight and compose poetry at the same time. Here's the classic depiction of Serrano, full of Gallic warmth by the French actor Gérard Depardieu, with Serrano forever frustrated in his love for the beautiful Roxanne. Though in recent years, Serrano's swordsmanship and poetry have stayed, but the big nose has been replaced with other character traits. And in one recent depiction, no big nose or physical attributes, just the duelling and rhyming. Incredibly, Cyrano de Bergerac actually existed. The real Cyrano lived in the first half of the 17th century. He allegedly came from an aristocratic family, though it's also claimed he was descended from a Sardinian fishmonger. His literature was part of a so-called libertine movement that rejected conventional morals. This was undoubtedly influenced by his lifestyle as a glutton, heavy drinker, gambler and hanging out with prostitutes. It's also been suggested that Serrano may have had at least one homosexual relationship. In reality, the love of his life, Roxanne, was more than likely a cousin who lived with his sister. And his physical disability could have been a war wound sustained fighting the Spanish around the year 1640. There's little doubt he was accomplished with the pen as well as the sword. He was the author of one of the first ever science fiction novels, The Other World, in which the narrator manages to travel to the moon and rather bizarrely meets the ghost of the Greek philosopher Socrates. This book was a huge influence on the Irish author Jonathan Swift, who wrote Gulliver's Travels in the following century. Cyrano's life was turbulent and included a period of time imprisoned in an asylum for the insane. His death is shrouded in mystery. Aged only 36, some say a wooden beam randomly fell on his head, while others claim he was assassinated, or that he had an unspecified disease possibly syphilis. So if you're a big fan of the man standing behind me here, Serrano de Bergerac, make a beeline for the Dordogne and come and visit Bergerac.